we're we're bouncing back from a rather tough episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah. The world may never see. Maybe we should just make a super cut of the times we broke down throughout recording going. What? I started <laughs> literally started watching it back and like my heart was like sinking every time we were like one of us was just like, hmm, like it's, what's happening? It's frightening that you can be you can PMS too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, that was crazy. I didn't I don't think I've ever it. really seen you like that. I don't think I've ever felt like that. That was extra. That was that was a lot. I was very everything you said felt very mean. <laughs> here we go <laughs> not a good way to start um it's all right we're, we'll make it through you know i don't know what the situation was that day but we were off we just were off mm -hmm. well i'm not feeling super off today and then you were like well maybe we should go to dinner and i was like i think we need to go our own ways right now and just be alone yeah. and then you called me immediately okay the fact that you love to be on the phone when you're in the car. I know. I think people are either for or against that. My, it's my catch up time. It feels like the most efficient time to have phone calls. Mm -hmm. And your drive home from here is 10 minutes. That's true. My drive home from here is a motherfucking hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I'm always trying to come early, leave early. Or have dinner afterwards to buy some time before instead of leaving during peak traffic. It sounds like you're talking about sex. Trying to come early, leave early, <laughs> at least have dinner. <laughs> Preach, Miriam. I know, I know. Well, I'm trying to get wined and dined. <laughs> Just treat me like another, another uh, side piece. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I do... I don't even remember why I called you. It was you just wanted to continue on. It was like we couldn't drop the fact that this this episode sucked. I know. <laughs> no, I think I called for a specific reason, like because I didn't want to forget. Yeah. But then it turned into more of like, what happened? I know. That's okay. I know. We're past it. I totally. Totally. Clearly, you weren't just sitting on that one until we started recording today. I wasn't. I know. I know. I know. I have. For some reason, my I have my parents' ETA. They're driving over from Palm Desert. That'll be exciting. Sinbad always does this, you know? They, she texts me at 7 in the morning and is like, Hey, we're going to pop over. Hi. It's always on a Monday, though. You hate Mondays. <laughs> well. For someone who doesn't work a normal 9 to 5 Monday through Friday, you really get a case of the Mondays. Well, because... Mondays are like a Saturday to me, or they they right, sh right. should kind of if you want them to be, <laughs> if you wanted to be somewhat a little bit sane, you know, yeah. and like if, or attempt to take a day off. But yeah. I guess that's just you know we don't do that. I know neither one of us takes days off. Uh, yeah, I feel like both of us are just seven days a week. All it, the time. If I do take days off, it comes as like a a forced like. I. You're going to have a mental break unless you do. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll just let things like bubble over and then be like, fuck it. Yeah. Last night I ordered two postmated dinners. What'd you get? Tacos to Madre. Oh, uh-huh. You had that place? Yeah, there's one right by my house. They got a Korean barbecue burrito. Yeah, they do. Dude. And their fish tacos, there's something special about the way they do them. It tastes like, it almost tastes like you're eating balls of sugar. <laughs> well, because they do, they're like a honey. Agave. Something oh, is like it? that. It's like okay. a sweet. Spicy agave. Yeah. And it just melts in your <laughs> mouth. Just dessert fish. But I ordered I ordered that in like a family size order. And then right after I kept looking at pictures of hamburgers and I was like, I kinda want a hamburger. And then I ordered Shake Shack. Why were you looking at pictures of hamburgers? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but Shake Shack has like a little thing where you can buy bones for your dog. So I justified it by being uh, like, It's not for me, it's for Sandy. Yeah, and I need to just, you know, add to the order to make it worth the delivery fee. But then the same driver ended up bringing both. Stop. But maybe he thought I was having a White Lotus viewing party or something with me, myself, and I. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe he thought that. We got to talk White Lotus. Well, fucking yeah. Um, I'm upset. I'm distraught. I'm, I'm uh, confused. And I'm also trying to think, did they leave that things like that open-ended in the... 
in the first season. Maybe a couple things. You guess, I guess you didn't really know where the blonde kid was going when he didn't get on that flight. I don't even remember that. I remember this remember Connie one. Britton's son? I don't even know who Connie Britton is. The redhead. I don't even remember the redhead. I remember not. Remember, I don't remember. How can plots. I work with this? How can I work with this person who calls, doesn't even call a cast a cast? You call him the staff. The staff. I know. Um, I saw it has the same staff. Well, I just, last season feels like, you know, years ago. Okay, the kid who sleeps outside a bunch on the beach and is always mm-hmm. playing his Game Boy or whatever yeah. the fuck. Yeah. And then starts canoeing a lot. That kid, remember at the very end, he doesn't get on the flight home with his parents because he's like, I want to live here. Yeah. Fuck you, mom. And fuck you, dad. Yeah. What about him? That was left kind of open-ended. Oh, oh, right, right, right. I mean, not even though, really. I guess you just, he didn't get on the flight. Yeah, he stayed. We don't know if Harper and, what's his name? Uh, Not Ethan. We don't know if they hooked up. I think, okay, should we talk theories? Sure. I felt one way last night, and then this morning I woke up with a different idea. Is this your own idea or something you saw on Tiki Talkie? I, I know haven't... you're newly on Tiki Talkie. I haven't, haven't watched Tiki Talkie today. Also, at I all. feel like that having our phones in here while we've been doing these podcasts, my TikTok for you page has really shifted into some darker shit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It's <laughs> a little creepy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I was thinking, I don't know if Ethan and Daphne banged on the island but i it could have been wait who's daphne the the not aubrey plaza the other wife i thought her name was harper who's harper harper is aubrey plaza oh oh okay did daphne and yeah oh so that's what you were saying earlier yes that's what i was saying got it okay i think they didn't okay but i the fact the fact that she put Put the pussy on the sideburns. The pussy on the side. It's a Nicki Minaj lyric. Okay. <laughs> Again, how am I supposed to work with this? <laughs> like the fact that she was offering it up, putting the puss on a pedestal, was enough to get him back in the swing. Well, what I think it was, remember when the girls went on their little day trip mm-hmm. or like one night trip mm-hmm. and how Daphne was like, you just have to play games like this. They didn't hook up with dudes on that trip, but she just like, mm-hmm. she's just, Daphne's playing a game. Mm-hmm. So I feel like Harper took that note and maybe she didn't even hook up with, um, what's his face, but just made Ethan think that. That's really interesting, Miriam. Right? It's very interesting. And I now think they did such a good job because Daphne, at the beginning, they made her seem so vapid and, like, the dumbest of the bunch. Yeah. And I think she's the smartest one. She's playing all of them. She's playing all of them, and she's enjoying her life. Yeah, she seems pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah. But they, like... She reminds me of some people I know. Me? Me? (laughs) <laughs> I'm just kidding. Miriam, please. <laughs> no. <clears throat> I'm just kind of, yeah, at the beginning of the show, you're like, who's this, you know, like, yeah. I, did I vote, babe? You know, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. whole thing. And yeah. then you're like, no, she actually knows exactly what she's doing. Yeah. She's just choosing this path. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I'm team Daphne. Also, when, um, when Tanya... Jennifer Coolidge mm-hmm. just blooped into the water. <laughs> I laughed out loud. I did too. <laughs> just like, I did too. like you hear a little thud. <laughs> and there was also a point in the episode I had to rewind because I couldn't hear what she said. There was she, when she was in when she was climbing over the thing or earlier in the episode? Earlier in the episode. I think it was when she like walked out to talk to the the guys and mm. she was like oh my gosh, I don't <laughs> and I thought I was like is she saying are you trying to kill me or something but it was like you couldn't hear it and I rewinded it <laughs> like and I almost had to put the it? captions on or the subtitles because I was like I can't understand her. <laughs> but that whole last chunk when she's like oh Ah, and closing her eyes and just closing her eyes and everyone. shooting everyone and then they're somehow all all shot I loved it I, I thought that seemed it. a little bit 
cheese. It, but it was. But then, did you listen to the little like after thing? Yeah, yeah. How he's like, it was operatic. It was yes, meant to be yes, like super yes, dramatic. Yes. I was like, that's so perfect. I wish he would have like ricocheted a little bit more on the fall. I know. <laughs> I think that wouldn't kill anyone. I know she should have cracked her head on the boat. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. But I would hate to see Tanya crack her head as well. I know. Instead, they just added in a sound effect of a dunk. <laughs> I just love, like, really anyone could have made that jump. But, like, she doesn't think to take her shoes off. I know, She doesn't I know. think to, like, do anything. She's just like, ah, ah, ah. oh, God. But now Greg gets everything. I know. Greg gets everything. And I think the darkest storyline was Portia. Yeah. Her, Portia and Albie. I, well, I know. Poor Albie got played. Yeah. Portia and Albie are both idiots. I know. But I think Albie's at least, is that his name? Albie, yeah. He's at least a little sweeter. I think they're both, they're both kind of just. Like, I don't really see Portia helping anyone. And Albie kind of, you know, at least helped someone. I mean, she was selfishly motivated. He was getting his dick wet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Does he even like sex, though? (laughs) (laughs) He sure likes wearing his socks up all the way. (laughs) It's pulled nice and taut. You know what really distracted me every episode was the bandage on the grandpa's head. I know. That was also, they just kind of left it as like he's bumping his head a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's forgetting things. Yeah. Like, did he really think it was a dream or was he in denial that he got rejected from his potential relatives? I thought he was trying to be funny. Oh. <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> it's really left up to the viewer. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. But I love that show. Well, okay, importantly, are you somebody that watches the full intro? Yeah, uh, I obviously. <laughs> it's so good. And there's been so many memes of like yeah. when the intro comes on or whatever. I'm like, oh my God, that's how I feel every time. Yeah. It's very I thought uplifting. Portia was going to get hacked. Also, <laughs> yeah. I thought she's about to get her head cut off for sure. So that haircut would be fun to watch her head just get slammed against something. I kept praying she'd put her hair in a pony. It was just so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. you're looking at me like I'm just trying to picture. I'm trying to picture what her kept... hair in a ponytail would do. I thought because also she said like he's kind of fucking your uncle when they were in the car. Yeah. I could have seen him Why just being he... like. Boom! Why didn't she say that outside of the car? Why did know, she wait until Margo. they were secluded? I don't know. Did you just call me Margo? Yeah. Okay. You don't know Nicki Minaj lyrics. You don't know Christmas vacation quotes. You... <laughs> what are we doing here, Miriam? <gasps> you don't decorate for Christmas until New Year's. <laughs> that, okay. <laughs> Actually, that is true this year. I'm not decorating. I do have a wreath. I will say I'm getting a little pissed vacuuming the fucking sparkles out from underneath our tree. The fact <laughs> that you bought a glittery Christmas tree. Blo- I mean, I thought we were over glitter as a people. I thought glitter, we all decided. It's me. It's cumbersome. It gets everywhere. No. All right. I love glitter. <laughs> okay. You know, I once glued my butt cheeks together with glitter. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> For what purpose? My birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Just stick a candle in there? <laughs> no, you oh. couldn't have. It was a sealed shut. <laughs> <laughs> Which birthday was this? My 30th. When I threw like that oh, big. Oh, I missed it. Big bash in San Diego. Mm-hmm. And we like had a, I, I wanted every, I like asked everyone to bring wigs one night. We just put glitter all over ourselves, but it ended up getting like in your butt. The, crack. the chocolate <laughs> mushrooms were flowing. The pool, yeah. for some reason, looked purple. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Aaron, is the pool purple?" And she was like, "Yes, it's purple." <laughs> but we put glitter like all over our faces, and then led down to the butt cheeks, and then you know, I think it was Kendall's fault. Kendall got a little too carried away with the gorilla glue. Okay. Next thing I knew, my cheeks gorilla I don't glue. Know. <laughs> But it didn't come off for like a week. Yikes. I was able to shit. <laughs> okay, that's the question we were all wondering <laughs> the answer to. <laughs> it's a weird feeling having your butt cheeks stuck together. Yeah, I can imagine. 
I don't know what it would be like for you since you have a nine foot deep butt crack. <laughs> It gets no air. Probably would make no difference at all. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty sealed it's, off in it's there. It's weird if you glue together the outskirts of the butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One time when I was little, uh huh, my sister, my parents went to a movie. Okay. And my sister made me lay down on two of the dining chairs, and she poured like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Over my butt crack. Like the juice? And the giblets. <laughs> and I don't know what the plan was. <laughs> Other than that, I think she just wanted to like do that and then be done. And I was just like laying there like, what are we doing? <laughs> Have you talked to her about that as adults? No, but I should. You should definitely try and see if she I'm, remembers I'm that. I'm sure she was had some sort of plan. Uh, Maybe. It doesn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that was the plan. <laughs> oh, my God. Your poor little childhood. Mm-hmm. Reza never poured chicken grease on my butt. It'd be weird if a brother did it. I think it's weird if a sister did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty weird regardless. Did you ever used to freeze Reza's boxers? No. Do you know of that? No. Really? You just get them, make them cold or you get them wet You first. get them wet and you put them in the freezer and then you're like, ha huh. But they have, <laughs> like all of them, they have multiple pairs. <laughs> I don't remember again what the plan was, but we used to always do that. All I know is I peed in your brother's boxers by accident. <laughs> and I sick. And I've told you this story multiple times and you never remember. Why, Sarah gave you a pair of Mike's boxers? We were making like a a rap video. Of course. Um. It, with the You're webcam. taking a break from creating feature films. Yeah, exactly. And we were... Um, the webcam? Yeah, with the webcam. Dude, if your parents knew the things I know. on that desktop. I know. Um, but yeah, so we were like, oh, let's go in Mike's closet and like get baggy pants. And like, so we got boxers. Put them on their skin tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got his boxers and then his jeans so that we could sag. I remember this. And I was laughing so hard that I pissed <laughs> your brother's clothes and I didn't tell Sarah because I was so embarrassed <sighs> and we just fold I just folded him back up and put him right back in his <laughs> right back in his closet. Miriam, that's evil. I'm sorry, Mike. Mike <laughs> and Mike I never been the same. I never been the same. No, they were probably like damp by the time like when he pulled him out next, but <sighs> yeah, I just peed in his clothes and put him right back where they came from. I still love fucking with Mike. Mm. Uh, I feel bad about that one, but it's you know your kids, your kids. You can't. Admit you guys, you I remember yourself. you took so many pictures in those like boxers and jeans with like backwards hats, and you guys thought you were so cute, so cute. And Sarah had so much makeup on, yeah, so much like spray tan and bronzer and uh-huh. like just bubblicious lips, yeah. And I had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever, like, say anything? Like, a lot of makeup. <laughs> I mean, definitely, like, kids in school commented on Sarah's makeup and, like, how tan she was, for sure. <laughs> but I think she just was like, this is this the is choice it. I'm making. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember one time she wore her hair curly, and I was like, your hair looks great curly. I know. I love it curly. Um, But she, yeah, she straightened it. To, mm-hmm. to death. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, she, she I couldn't likes... get my hair that straight if I had tried. Mm-hmm. I think the one time I tried to, like, get it straight, it turned into a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just, like, like a cartoon profile. Yeah. Um, I remember, like, looking in the mirror after, like, elementary school and being like, shit. Nothing looks as it did when you left the house. And then you'd have some um, days when you're like... Oh, you, when you wake up and you think you look great without makeup, and then halfway through the day you look at yourself and you go, I've aged 30 years. Are you talking like current day? Younger day. I ne- yeah, I never wore makeup until high school, and then I got creative with eyeliner. I used to wear white eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> Are you working for Cirque du Soleil? I don't know. I was just trying to be different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know. We made it work. We yeah. survived. You make it work. Yeah. Anyways, um, I forgot how we began down that journey, but the parents are coming to town. 
Parents are coming to town. That'll be fun. Do you hide things from your parents? Because I was hiding some shit. Like the the paraphernalia? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't really have that much to hide. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time my brother came down and he, I was at work, so he like came into my place before I got home. And when I got home, he was like, I looked through everything. <laughs> and I was like, okay. What? And he was like, I didn't find anything. I just, I just feel like I should let you know I looked through everything. And I was like, all right. Huh. Um, thanks for telling me. But apparently, so all that said, I feel like you should hide things. Yeah. Um, just in case. Because people are, people are looking. Yeah. You know? I just, because I, I would look. I look everywhere. Really? Oh, yeah. Are you, when you go to someone's house and you go to the bathroom, do you look in their medicine cabinet or do you look yes. behind the Everything. shower curtain? Everything. Really? Everything. I want to see it all. I never do. I was, I was at your house the other day and. Well, I mean, unless it's someone I don't really know. I mean. That's what I'm, like, I've. Yeah, if, like if you were invited to someone's house, like new friend invited to their house for a party, would you go looking through their bathroom? It depends on how much of a detective I'm feeling like that day. Okay. But for the most part, I feel like I take a peek. Interesting. Mm. I don't. I, I remember I had like some friends over for dinner back in Portland and one of the girls that was over came out of the bathroom and was like, I, I feel like I should let you know I looked in your shower. And I was like, okay. Just black just, hair everywhere. <laughs> yeah, just so every surface is coated. Um, yeah, why I don't the, know. What's the, why do people like looking in the shower? I much prefer the medicine cabinet. I want to see if people are as fucked up as I am. Yeah. Um, or if they have anything fun. I don't know. I guess I, it could be looking for dead bodies or just looking to see how nasty the shower is. Huh. But God knows I clean the shower before anyone comes over. Really? Yeah. You don't think maybe they're looking at what kind of nice hair products you have? But someone messaged me on uh, one of the questions we got this week was, what's your skin regimen? Which I see Ben didn't pick here. Because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give him a fucking damn. <laughs> and he also didn't pick the one that said, how's your loser assistant? Yeah. <laughs> no. Which we found out was his girlfriend. Yeah. Either his girlfriend or his mother. One of the women in his life. <laughs> One of the two women in Not his life. Not to call him out. Not his fantasy football teams. Three women in my life now. Aww. Oh, Banjo Man! Wait, what about me? Three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> ben, and, ben and my opener, Tommy, really bonded this weekend, and I, I really I liked that. Yeah, that's cute. What'd they do? Were they, like, holding hands and skipping? I don't know. They were, like, they were exchanging mints or something, and one of them was like, do you want some... What was it? You want a couple Lucy's? You want a couple Lucy's, like extras, to just be romp milling about in your pocket. Uh huh. And at that point, they looked each other in the eye and they were like, oh, "I love you." Aww. They didn't really say that, but that's when they that's, knew they were that like, was the connection. Midwest boys or some shit. And then yeah. they were so proud of the moment they told me about it after. Wow, cute. Is Lucy like a Midwest term? I guess. Okay. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Definitely. Eating Chipotle yet again out there. <laughs> Just flicking onions. <laughs> Half the Zin canisters are now full of onions. Exactly. <clears throat> um, I feel like we were in the middle of something and I got I got sidetracked. Um, we were just talking about snooping in people's things, I think. Oh yeah. Um Oh, I was high yeah. There's like a couple oh, of pill skincare bottles. regimen. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple pill bottles like from Mexico. In your cabinet? Yeah. But I was like, oh, I'll just... Because they were in the, like, the side thing. They're not something that I like... I never go in this thing, but I was like, oh, shit. And there's a little thing from the show Hacks. They sent me like a PR package and it like... It's a little gold pill case that says uppers and downers. Oh, funny. You and... hid that from your parents? Because <laughs> they would probably look at it and not get it, you know? Right. I think they would see that and be like, something's wrong. Yeah. Aw. And there's just a lot... I hit... There's a lot of lube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to buy lube once and it was like, oh, you could only buy like a six pack. Right. Sure. <laughs> like, I'll take 12 bottles, please. <laughs> I love lube. <laughs> lube me up. You're like, Aaron, why don't you lay across these two lounge chairs? Let me pour this on your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add a little bit of loose chicken. Some Lucy's. <laughs> Some Lucy's. 
<laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> yeah, I think your parents don't want to see your pile of lube. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair to hide that. And sometimes I like, I don't even think, I don't know. I guess I could turn on the Alexa and take a look at them. On like camera? Mm-hmm. You have cameras in there? There's part of me that feels like they don't know what, they're, they're not going to know what to do when they get to a house. Like if there's not a tutorial or a list. They'll probably go out and tell them to go to the point and they'll watch some TV. They'll hang out. Do your parents know how to work a TV? Yeah. My dad told me my TV had all these channels that I didn't even know about. Your parents are smart, dude. <laughs> <laughs> my parents cannot, dude. Like, they can't work TV. Oh. I just, um, I, so when Nick was living with me, um, it's World Cup. And thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the games was at seven in the morning and he yeah. was still sleeping and I, I was already up. So I was like, oh, I'll just turn it on, but I'll put it on mute. So, you know, I can see like wa watch what's happening without waking him up. And I turn it on and my TV was on like the loudest <laughs> setting. And I was just like, fuck, 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 like trying to turn it down. And my remote wasn't working. And then I was like, without the remote, there's no other way to do this like I can't the TV doesn't have any buttons oh so I just had to turn and then I turned it off so the remote worked well enough to turn on and off the TV but the volume button wasn't doing anything and then I, I was like okay I'm gonna like try it again <laughs> without changing anything I was like it'll be different this time and, fingers crossed yeah and then I did it again and it was super loud again and then I heard him like stirring about <laughs> Sorry. And then he came out. He's like, did I hear uh, a little football? And I was like, sorry, bud. Yeah, I couldn't get the volume to go down. Um, but then we just replaced the batteries. And Isn't that because you have like a Sonos speaker with a different remote? It didn't come with a different remote. I just heard your throat. <laughs> I was going to say. Here. <laughs> that was wow. very loud. <laughs> To see if the mic got that. It definitely, if I could hear it from here, the mic definitely <laughs> got that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt really bad that I that I woke him up. But um, did you though, or did you want someone to watch with? No, I swear to God, it was an accident. That's like that's definitely behavior I wouldn't put past me. But I I definitely was trying to be quiet. Remotes can fuck with you because some of the buttons work and some of them motherfucking don't. How? Why is that? I don't know because we've just had this issue with my show remote oh. not working correctly and it like it normally works up to like 300, 400 feet away. Yeah. And it wasn't but like the laser was working on it or whatever. Remember, <laughs> remember <laughs> when we were in Indianapolis and we were like, the remote's not working and we're like freaking out oh, yeah. and you just <laughs> had to put in the USB. Yeah. <laughs> that was pure rust. Pure, there's been a lot of things with that. This past weekend, <clears throat> what was it? Show number, show number three. I don't know. We had four really fun shows this weekend. It was in Kansas City. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I dropped the remote at one point and I couldn't find it on stage. And I was like dressed During as the Patty show. and the sunglasses are on and they're like covered in white claw. Uh -huh. And because I had like I had dropped it and then I thought I had picked it up <laughs> and then I just didn't know where I put it. But this girl had been on stage and I was like pouring white claw on her head and I thought she took it. I was like convinced that she took it from me. And I, like, went over to her table dressed as Patty, and I was like, where's the remote? <laughs> I was like, I can't find the remote. And then, like, Ben and Tommy, I guess, were backstage, like, where the fuck is it? Turning everything over, trying to find it. And I had put it in my DeWalt. Oh, in the tool belt. it was just, belt. like, at the bottom of the... Gotcha. I couldn't see it, and I was flustered, and... But you found it? Eventually, but it felt like hours up there. Yeah. But I found it. But there's been so many times on stage after I drop harassing it. a woman, <laughs> I drop it all the time, and it always shatters, and the batteries go haywire. Oh god! So the last remote I've had is like fully duct taped together. We haven't done that with this one yet, but yeah, yeah. You replace the batteries that are already brand new, and it's like it's some some of them batteries are just uh, you know some ba the batteries supercharged, supercharged. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand remotes. I then I started looking up best remotes, and then I was like, I don't. I don't care this much to like try and figure out what's the right one. I picture you with a very old geriatric remote. It's the one that came with. It's funny we're talk, doing all this remote talking. There's a remote just <laughs> sitting on the table that I don't think is ever there. Um, I, I it's just whatever came with the TV. 
It's not like I got some like super fancy remote. It just came with it. Yeah, this I don't podcast know. is sponsored by Lumify. Lumify and Zen and QuickBooks because because you can't figure because I out. can't figure it out. Guys, if anyone can help Marion with her QuickBooks, please, please, she can make you a design in exchange, maybe. Yeah, honestly, or a it's pork chop been... with a mango chutney. <laughs> Is that some quote? Is that Nicki Minaj too? <laughs> oh, God. You roll up in here with your mustard ass jacket and your your burnt orange ass sweater. It's cold out. Mm -hmm. It's super chilly. Mm -hmm. Although it was way nicer on this side of town than my side of town. It was all pouring and gray. And then I drove over down the 405 and the, it just cleared up. The ocean looked like Poseidon's Wharf yesterday. <laughs> what? I don't. I don't know what that means. Is that a good thing, <laughs> or like Storm and Norman? Oh, it was okay. all brown. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've stepped on a stingray before. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I've been through some shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The, the ocean being brown reminded me of Red Tide, which reminded me of when I was in seventh grade and I stepped on a stingray. Okay. I was running through the ocean, and do you even want to hear the story? Let's hear it. Yeah. You're running through the ocean. Last week, we were too insecure. This week, am I too ADD? I'm not. No. Okay. Okay. I was running on the ocean like I was in Baywatch. And I, uh -huh. you know, thought it was really you know, seventh grade, you know, some yeah. sort of weird wave of confidence. Okay. First time in, in Sansanitas. <laughs> <laughs> first, time in, first time in Sansanitas. Uh-huh. And I'm running. And I'm running in about three inches deep of water. And then I get to about knee shin height. And then I feel... What I can only assume is a shark attack on my left foot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I went running out of the water and I thought for sure my foot was gone, even though I was still running. <clears throat> and a stingray had, I had stepped on it and the, the thorn or the prong or whatever the the went up stinger? and it stung right underneath my big toenail. Ugh. And stingrays have like, they put a poison in you. Uh -huh. That hurts so bad. So it's not really the wound that hurts. It's the poison. Yeah. That's how bees are too. And you just have to wait for it to like suck out. So you just have to like sit with your foot in hot water. I was in a bath for nine years. Oh God. Ouch. You survived though. Barely. And then I baked cookies for the lifeguards that helped me because I was acting like I was dying. Oh really? I was like, Wah! I want a shark. And they were hot. <laughs> and then I brought them cookies and they were like, thanks. You ugly fuck. <laughs> I was like, I straightened my hair just for you. Here's some cookies. Did you see me running before I got stung? <laughs> <laughs> How good did I look? How good did I look? That's funny. Yeah. Um, I've never been stung by stingray, jellyfish, Bumblebee? no shark attacks. Bumblebee. I got stung, yeah. Last time I got stung was in the back of my knee. And so as a reflex, I like bent my knee and oh. then I smushed the bee oh. in there. And I think I like jammed the stinger in deeper. Oh, it was, you know, not that fun. <laughs> and then like, like when I unfolded my knee, the bees like was just like he was just stuck with his butt He's... attached to my knee. He still had some hydraulics in him. I mean, he was just still buzzing. a little Yeah, bit. he was fluttering about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still here, bitch. <laughs> I ain't got got. One time when I was at my best friend's house, Paige, Paige Lanson, when we were kids, we were trying to go into the woods, and <clears throat> we jumped over this. We had to jump over this fence to get into the woods. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the game plan was for the day, but we had glued on these acrylic fake nails, like okay. the real Claire's ones or something like that. And then we were like, let's go play in a forest because that's just what you did in Oregon, mm -hmm. and. She was behind me. She was she was behind me, and I jumped over the fence first, and I jumped directly onto a beehive. Oh my! And all the bees came swarming like up on my head, and oh. I have very very thick hair. And I just remember <sighs> running down the street, screaming, going like, Aah! and the bees were like burrowing into my scalp. And I like took my nails and I just like put them against my legs and like ripped off the fingernails, and then like was just <sighs> trying to get them all out. It took them forever to get the bees out. Oh, we were just dying in there. Did you have, did your head just get stung a, a bunch of times. times? Ouch. Well, I'm so off kilter. Maybe. Maybe it's all the bee venom. Yeah. Did a lot more damage than just the pain. I mean, I feel like they were finding them for weeks after that. I mean, you do have a ton of hair. 
I could see that. My mom would like go to French braid my hair for a gymnastics meet and be like, there's another little one. Wow. When did you, do you know how to, you know how to French braid, right? Yeah. When did you do learn? You not? No, I do, but I had like a book that taught me. <laughs> it's a book on braids. <laughs> I learned all sorts of braids. On the front! <laughs> um, I don't, I don't remember. Mm. Maybe on my sister or friends or like probably gymnastics something. Okay. Lots of options. <laughs> Not a book though. So Not what did you do? Did you have like fake hair that you played with? No, I braided my own hair, but I Oh, you learned... can braid your own hair in a French? Yeah. Well, that's crazy. You can't? Not really. I just don't Should've want to. Should have gotten this book. I don't have the energy for that. Yeah. It does, it, all the blood runs out of your arms and then you have to like shake Can you do out like and... really tight good ones or is it like a loose I'm an architect braid? <sighs> <laughs> Don't laugh at that, Chris. <laughs> um, I. It depends how much time I'm willing to spend. You know, if I did a really tight one, it would be I would need to take blood blood flow breaks. You know, mm -hmm. I noticed in the notes you wrote that uh, you got hit on. I got hit on. Yeah, this weekend. Well, you, fill me in. So I went to a Christmas party. With um, who? Where? Whose party? It was a a colleague of mine. She had a a coworker. A coworker. Is it a coworker? It was a coworker. Um, but her everyone's, and I are everyone is your coworker. Friends outside of work too. Um, so yeah, she had a little. She they do one annually, and her um partner is a writer. So it was like mm. sort of like industry people, and then some designers. Um, and yeah, this. At the end of the night, I was, like, about to leave um, and had already started saying my goodbyes. And then this guy comes up out of nowhere and he's like, I've been drinking since 11 a.m. today. <laughs> and he was wasted and he was talking to me and the girl whose party it was and then another girl. And um, he, I mean, there was no space. I mean, he was just chatting and chatting and chatting and telling us all about himself. He goes by Holiday M. From December 1st to December 26th. Mm -hmm. If you call him by any other name, he's not going to respond. Um, which I thought was interesting, just to go back to our questions from last week. Notice the date that he starts being called Holiday M. December 1st? December 1st. Because that's and when he's the getting holiday called is. Holiday M for a whole month. Yeah, exactly. That's like putting decor up two months early. Mine's no, more quiet. Whatever. Anyway. He was going off about how he's, um, uh, you know, he loves the holidays. During that time, he's like, I go home and I just, the kitchen is mine. Get the fuck out of the kitchen. Which I was like, this is a modern man we're talking to here. Absolutely. Um, and then he, at some point, he like repeated himself because he kept asking the girl whose house it was who she was. And she kept <laughs> saying like, this is my house. <laughs> and then, um, and I was like. Whatever. I was like, you're not going to remember anything tomorrow. And then he was like, I'm going to remember you because you're fucking gorgeous. And then he like pauses and then looks at the other girls. He's like, not that you guys aren't. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned into a really hilarious. Uh, they were like playing offended. And I was just like, thanks, man. Um, but he wants to take me to the Dresden. But I did not give him my number. Why not? Just didn't feel like it. He's kind of a party. He was a party boy. Yeah. I'm not trying to, you know. And it was kind of nice. I was like, man, I haven't been out and like gotten hit on that blatantly. Yeah. In a minute. And it was really, it was really funny. So what if he's two sheets to the wind? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anything Doesn't counts. Doesn't matter. Count it up. He's a big fan of soccer. Um, So we talked World Cup. Nice. Which was also top of mind for me this weekend. Uh, um, I turned it on Friday. Okay. Right before the first Argentinian goal happened. And okay. I was shitting at that announcer who was like, oh! <laughs> You went on forever. Were you watching Telemundo? And it, was like, oh. it started to fluctuate. Yeah. I don't think I was watching Telemundo. Oh, well, their announcers are just. It was on Peacock. Okay. Well, I don't know. Telemundo. I love, I feel like soccer is one of the, everyone, I mean, I know it has a rep of being boring and whatever, but I think to it's. Who? Um, Americans who watch football, baseball. All of baseball is so fucking boring. I think baseball is the boring one, but I think everyone agrees soccer is pretty exciting. I think people don't like that it's low scoring. Like if there's no, uh, like World Cup obviously is very exciting because there's lots of goals. They're like, you know, shots on goal. players and yeah. 
But lots of headers. Lots of headers of bicycle kicks. Oh, mm-hmm. I love it. I love the bicycle kicks. It just reminded me of when, because I played soccer growing up, and my dad <laughs> was always like wa- wanting me to watch games with him. Mm-hmm. So he's like, this is how you're going to learn. This is how you're going to be better. You have to watch good players and like understand how, see how they're like, you know, pass and then they run and you've got a triangles. It's all about triangles. And he's always t- like coaching me off the field. But to the point where like I resented it and I never wanted to watch any soccer oh. after that. And then now as an adult, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have watched more because um, I really love watching it. But yeah, my dad was like very strict with with sports, like with soccer in particular. Like he would he wanted me to watch games. And then if I wasn't doing that, he would be like, go to the park and go juggle, like juggle the soccer ball just to practice because mm. that's how you get ball control. So I would just be like at the field, like by myself, just like juggling a soccer ball for hours. Um, and then I remember one time I was at a game and he would so I would he coached me when I was younger. But then when I got older, I had other coaches. Yeah. But my dad was always coaching from the sideline, sideline, like sideline. sideline. <laughs> he, would be like, he would whistle. He has like a very he had a different whistle for me and my brother growing up. So like he would call us back home with a whistle. But he would sit on the sideline, and I would hear my whistle, and then I would like look over, and he's like motion, motion. And, like he had all these like specific like hand signs that he would like be screaming at me, and. I remember I had braces so in middle school and he made me wear a mouth guard because he didn't want me to get hit in the face of the ball and then like have a bloody lip. And I really didn't want to wear a mouth guard probably because I was just embarrassed to be wearing a mouth guard. But I, he made me do it. So I was wearing this thing and it, I couldn't fucking breathe during the game. And I'm just like, it was, I think we were probably losing. I don't know. And then my dad's like on the sideline, like motion, motion. And at a certain point I just was like, like I pulled the mouth guard out like all spitty and I just chucked it at it and then kept running. <laughs> Mary, um, I fuck you, so, dad. I was so mad. That was like my middle school soccer rebellion was just <laughs> chuck a spitty old mouth guard at my dad. Couldn't handle it. What did he it. do? I think, he, I mean, he was probably, he was probably pissed. I don't remember. We laugh about it now. Did he make sure to have it at the end of the game for you? Probably, yeah. We, yeah. He just also like. I mean, he was a great. He coached all the like all the teams. Like he oh, loves soccer. Yeah, yeah. Like he's he knows the game inside and out. And I wish I would have listened to him more about it. But it's hard when you look back on I those mean, things and you're like, damn it, they just told me to do it too many times. I know, totally. My dad was that way with guitar. Really? Like, Wait, got did me you play a, guitar? No, but he got me a guitar for my birthday when I was really young, and he was like. My brother and sister were in piano lessons, and he was like, you're going to play guitar, because he plays guitar. Mm. <clears throat> and then this kid who lives up the street sat on it, and it broke. And then, like, for years, we just were, like, hiding the guitar from Dad. Oh. Yeah. Um, That's really smart that your parents made you wear a mouth guard, though, because when I was doing ice skating and I had braces, I fell on my face, and my lip went through my braces. Uh, you mean other way around? My braces went through my lip. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's Your the same lip thing. Goes in between the two. <laughs> um, they crisscrossed. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, it was f- blood on the pristine ice. Yeah. Were you at the Lloyd Center? Where'd you go ice skating? Clackamas. Oh. Okay. Oh, actually, that's a good question. No, I think I did do it. I did the Lloyd Center. Yeah. Crazy. You know, they. I think they. Got, they either got rid of or just resized that rink. So yeah. it's not like a normal rink. It's now like a circle. I skated on it uh, a few years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it is smaller. Yeah. They made it smaller. Just... <sighs> ice skating is the best. I love it. we were in skating. Kansas City, there was an ice skating rink right outside of my hotel room window. Did you go? No. Ugh, you should have. I, I was such a dumper. For someone who loves the holiday spirit and wants only cheer for three months, I can't believe you didn't go. <laughs> okay, well, I... I get really worried if there's two shows a night back to back that I'm like, well, I'm worried about I'm going to lose my voice, which we didn't. Great. But like, I just was really worried that like there was a small vial of energy that was going to be completely depleted if I were to take the ice. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't go. But I didn't really need to. I mean, I was horizontal scrolling all day. Oh, my God. Both days. 
And then I would like get up and walk around a little bit and I like get a rush of like endorphins. <laughs> like this feels good. <laughs> and then straight back to the bed. <gasps> yeah. Candy crushing away. <sighs> you know. You got to get a better game. I don't know. There's got to be something. I don't think I should be introduced to any more distractions. You're right. You're right. (laughs) Never mind. Like TikTok, Instagram, Candy Crush. It's plenty. News. Ah! Yeah. Yeah, Turned on the soccer game for two minutes and the eighth time that guy screamed goal, I was like, I've had enough. (laughs) (laughs) I can't act like I'm enjoying this. What a job, though, you know? Yeah, that'd be fun. Also, it's just like, ah, it's just, I don't know. I love, like, sports energy is just... The best energy. I just, yeah, I, I'm like, I don't really have any team loyalty. Like, I don't really care if one team wins or not. But I just love watching good games. You know, the more competitive, the better. I love when they're close. I love that feeling of like being in a stadium, and everyone's just like pumped. Yeah, love that. And there's the hot dogs everywhere. Hot dogs everywhere. Beer spilling. Can candy? No, what is it called? Not candy corn. Candied yams? No. <laughs> corn on the cob. The spinny one. Cotton candy. Cotton, uh, cotton candy. Cotton corn. <laughs> I saw the guy says it in the movie It, which I'm also sure you've never seen. Correct. Correct. I have not. I did start watching Wednesday, which I am enjoying. It's great. Have you watched it? Some of it. It's a little cheesy, but man, I just like Tim Burton. I like, I like it. Jenny Ortega. Is that the main girl? Yeah. Yeah, she's good. She did this uh, movie with um, Maddie Ziegler. I don't know who that is either. Uh, it's like a school shooting goes down and her and the other girl are like in the bathroom when it happens. Okay. It's a really good movie. Okay. Sounds intense. It is. Got but it. Worth watching. Yeah. Okay. We'll add it to the list. Okay. Um, what else happened in Kansas City? So you didn't go to the ice skating rink. You're scrolling all day. Scrolling all Shows day. Shows happened. Didn't, yeah. didn't someone like jump up on stage and remember you from yes. like last year? Yes. Someone uh, from like a couple years ago. Okay. Someone got on stage toward the end of the show and was like dancing. And then after when we were doing the meet and greet, she was like, it's me, Maspen. <laughs> You let me stay in your hotel room? And I was like, well, what? She didn't look the same at all. Maybe I think she used to have bangs. Okay. That completely changes the look. It sure does. But, um, yeah, we had, um, yeah, a random girl. There's also a, a, a group there that has come to, like, four shows now. It keeps happening. <laughs> the girls? Um, the girls. Is so that them? was fun. What? Is no, it's the, not oh. the girls, but I'm okay. glad they're following you now. Thanks yeah. to girls. <laughs> no, but this girl, yeah, she was like, do you remember Aspen? And I had kind of completely forgotten about it. But yeah, we were, we got like stranded in the Aspen airport. There was a crazy snowstorm. And I was headed to Sacramento. I don't know the yeah, answer. Yeah, I was headed to Sacramento to do a corporate gig. And it was like, oh, corporate gigs are always like a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't get there because of the snowstorm. They, they were like, no planes are leaving whatever and so um i had just done i think the aspen comedy festival so i like called my contact there and they got me like extended my hotel room and i went back and like i had been at the bar just like i think drinking like spritzes or red wine or something uh-huh. but the storm was a brewing uh-huh. and i was like i don't think we're taking off let's have some beverageinos so me and this girl had like a couple glasses and then i was like you can she was like stranded and i was like you can stay in my hotel room if you want did she was she a fan of yours Prior to that, or no. you just met in stranger. Okay, got it. I think she, I think she might be an architect. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. We need the answer. But to she that. was like very kind, like not scary. Yeah, like just a very normal person who yeah. was like, "I'm totally stranded," and they had put me up like really nice hotel. So I was like, "You can just stay in my room. Like it's totally fine. Whatever." So I get back, and I'm like, "All right, well, I guess I don't I don't have a gig tonight." And then they call, and they're like, "Do you want to just do virtual? We'll like get it all set up." And I, I didn't even remember because this was virtual became so normal during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. But this was way before that. Yeah. This must have been like, God, I don't even know, 2017. Oh, wow. OK. Or something like that. Yeah. So not a couple years ago. No. <laughs> like many years ago. Okay. Yeah. Maybe 2018. I don't know. But I did not remember this girl. OK. And so they set me up in like a hotel room ballroom with my laptop to like perform at this corporate holiday event. And it was so painful. Yeah. Um, 
but we just we just did it. There was no microphone. I think I used like a spoon oh, to make it seem like it. And we had the setup like the laptop was on top of a chair that had like some pillows on it. And like this girl that I had just met at the airport was just in the room and like <laughs> just sitting there watching like this is insane. Because <laughs> oh. I'm like performing as Susie Chapstick for this holiday party. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then. Yeah. I mean, that was your, maybe that's, you were ahead of the game with virtual performances. Perhaps. I remember being so excited that I was off the hook and then they were like, virtual? I was like, fuck. Yeah. But I was kind of like up for it. I was like, all right, well, this will be new. Yeah, exactly. Fun. And anything's exciting. Like when you're caught in a snowstorm, it's like anything's possible. That's so true. I you know? love snowstorms. I do too. And thunder and lightning. Yeah, same. It's like, oh, we're stuck. Yeah. There's, it's thrilling. It's thrilling. I I was in Malta, <clears throat> or no, I was in Albania, and I there was like a storm that was coming. In. It was like beautiful sunset, and then you could kind of tell like something ominous was about to happen. Yeah, and it was the most intense lightning storm I think I've ever lived through. Like it it's was exciting. Just like, it was happening right over my head. And I was just like, wow, like in a country I'd never been to before. Standing out there with a golf club <laughs> and it just <laughs> just hoping for death. Closer and closer to my head. Yeah. <laughs> um but it was so I don't know, it was just so exciting and it's like it's like it's romantic. Yeah. There's something just like moving about it. I love one time I was in Montana and there was a, a lightning storm and I just remember like really wanting to swim. But you're not supposed to. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but I, just really, I really wanted to swim in the rain. Why yeah. is that, actually? Why you want to swim in the rain, or why is it bad to swim? In a lightning storm. <sighs> I don't is know. Is it if you're wet, it hits you? Or does it hit the lake? I think it's attracted to water. I don't even know. I don't know. I'm going to look it up. Um... Or maybe like the current goes. This is the first thing we we need to look. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was like a few weeks ago. I was talking to someone about maybe I was flying during a storm. Was I with you? And we were we were talking about what happens when. Oh no, I think it was Nick. We're talking about what happens when a plane gets hit by lightning because surely they have to be able to survive. Yeah, but I've heard it. Well, somebody told me on my way to Bella Corolla Gymnastics Camp. If a lightning strikes the wing, it can blow the plane out of orbit. <laughs> okay. Out of orbit. It just mm-hmm. woo, 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 woo. It's like <laughs> spinning around Saturn. <laughs> it can knock the plane off of its balance. Um, why is swimming bad? You're still I know, not even I, typing well, it? I typed I started typing the words that I was saying, so I didn't get very far. Lightning often strikes water and water conducts electricity. So I was right on both accounts. And what does conduct mean? Um, Tells it where to go? No, it's like... A, like a conductor. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's why. Um, no, it's like a... It... I don't know the right word for it. Like it's... Those... Like electricity moves through it. Is that why you're not supposed to touch a light socket when you're wet? I don't think you're supposed to touch light sockets when you're not wet either. (laughs) I did that though. Have you ever been electrocuted? (laughs) Of course I've been electrocuted. Look at me. I mean, okay. I got I got electrocuted. (laughs) Guys, Miriam has her full jacket over her legs. I was chilly. Yeah. I like being warm. No shit. Um I was so we had growing up we had this big like because my dad had a restaurant and then we had this like giant freezer we had a giant freezer in the garage Mm -hmm. and i think i don't know why you getting electrocuted just making me laugh i don't know why i needed to unplug it but for some reason i needed to unplug it so i was like laying over top of the thing it was probably like three feet deep and i'm like 10 maybe and I'm trying to pull out this three pronged um out like sock whatever plug, and it is kind of jammed in there, so I keep having to like just inch it out like little by little with little pinches. And then I just didn't know enough about electricity. So once I got it enough where I could get my finger behind 
Oh. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> between the plastic bit and the actual outlet. Oh, God. I did that, but then I touched the prongs while they're still plugged in. <sighs> and I straight up was just like <laughs> like <laughs> like a cartoon and um yeah and then i was just like laying there on top of this <laughs> on top of this giant freezer like saw my life flash before my eyes but did you no but it was very like it really jolted me um and then another time i was on the phone with my friend in high school and i was like laying in our off like our office room and I was laying under the desk and there were these two wires that were just hanging down that had metal ends. And I didn't know what they were for or why they were there. And I'm talking on the phone and I'm just like grabbing, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like twirling my hair, but I'm playing with live wires. <laughs> and I touched them together and same thing. I like that one, like my body started convulsing. Like I was just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I like dropped them. <laughs> Why would you touch them together? I don't know. I was just like mindless. Why were there, were, no, were you better doing question, it? why were there live hot wires just hanging off of the desk? Okay, couple questions. <laughs> Whose desk? Our family. Like, it was our office. Like, we Somebody had a try, couple computers in there. Well, probably a little childhood prank. I don't but know. Were you grabbing them like a scientist and going like, mm. Yes, I was touching them together. were you just together. like grabbing them like this? No, I was touching them together. Well, man, you had that coming then. <laughs> like, I was you like hot wiring a car. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Let's see if I can blow up the family desk. Yeah. See if my dad makes me juggle then. <laughs> 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 I just yeah, fully convulsed. Like the phone, I dropped the phone, and then you I probably pe- didn't have your mouth guard in at that time. No, exactly. <laughs> like you didn't just crack on your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those are my electrocution stories. Mine are not as interesting, I guess. I mean, we just had the we have the electric dog fence, mm. and we would just sit there going like. <laughs> 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 like intentionally shocking <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of another time. I don't know. Yeah, it's always accidental. I'm I'm definitely always very scared when I go to jump a car. Yeah, same. Because if it's not the, is it the opposite or is it red to red, black to black? Or is it opposite? I think it's red to red, black to black. Yeah. I'm, I'm always scared sure. that that's going to be the end of me. But if you oh, touch oh, them oh. together, that, that'll spark for sure. But it's rubber on the handle, so that's okay. Right. It'll just like spark the spark. Fun. Yeah. I do have a taser. Good for you. But I've never shot it at anyone. Um, but I would. I had to. For fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the electric fence, but yeah. tasering. Yeah. Yeah. Do um, you have any weapons? Mm-mm. No? I should probably. Yes, I do. I mean, oh. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't, have, I don't carry pepper spray. I don't do anything. Mm. I just walk swiftly. With purpose and you hope no one bothers me. at all times. I did get, well, you know, I got punched in the face downtown by a homeless woman. I did not know that. Really? When I first moved here? You have more encounters. <laughs> I swear every time we talk on the phone or damn near every day, something goes on with you and the homeless. That's not true. You're either seeing someone jerk off, seeing someone piss, oh. seeing a live wire turd come out. Yeah. That that happened, yeah. That ha- that's happened to me like six times. I've seen poop come out of a butthole. <laughs> that means you're really looking at it. No, one yeah. of, one of them I was. If you dri- see someone squatting, you should look away. Two of them I was driving. One of them I you was like, it was on Alameda, uh, in downtown LA, and the, and I was driving, and I saw this guy like laying. He was laying on the sidewalk with like his legs in the street. And shitting laying down on your back, dude. And his like shoulders were like on the curb. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And he's reading a newspaper. And as I'm like driving by, I'm like turning my head to be like, what is going on? And then I saw the poop hanging and I realized he was laying over a sewer like grill, like drain. So I was like, actually very thoughtful. (laughs) He was using it as a toilet. But dangerous because his legs were just in the street and also he's chilling he's reading a paper while taking a shit it was very what was the make and model of the shit you know i was driving so i didn't really get that (laughs) good of a look but it was a log it was definitely like a log i thought if you shit in a sewer it explodes what haven't you seen christmas (laughs) vacation 
Um, yeah, but so long ago. That's not one of my regulars. Okay, well, in Christmas Vacation, that's like the whole thing of the movie. It's like Eddie drains the RV sewer. He drains the sewer, the RV shit. Yes. In the sewer. Okay. And then at the end of the movie, it like explodes. Like it's fire? Green, or... like it's green like there's nitroglycerin. I mean, maybe they was making some like methane. Maybe something about the methane. Perhaps. The inflammable. I don't Perhaps. know. Perhaps. I'll rewatch it. Okay. We got questions from fans again. We do have questions. But but no, I have two more stories I'd like to work through. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's hear them. Because I was just looking, like, do you did you take family? I'm starting to get a lot of Christmas family photos. Uh family Christmas cards. Like from friends? Yeah. Okay. Did you guys do those as kids? No. We didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> we got a we got a lot. My mom but... would like take individual pictures of all of us and it would be like me on the bounce beam and every all the rest of the family together. <laughs> <laughs> um but th- there was one holiday season where we went to like I don't know if it was what Christmas tree farm it was, but there was like a donkey corral. Okay. You sure they weren't reindeer? I'm pretty sure. They okay. might have been alpacas. Okay. There was something. But I had those like short little bob and it was like kind of, you know, blondish brown, like little rab chuck bangs. And my parents were like, go stand next to the fence and take a picture with the donkeys. Uh-huh. With one of your kind. <laughs> and I was like standing next to the fence and then they were like, back up a little bit more, back up a little bit more, like get closer to the donkeys. And so by the time they take the picture, I'm standing like <clears throat> right against the fence and a donkey bit bit my hair through the fence <laughs> and I'm just going and my head is bashing against the fence because it's just ripping out because my hair looked a lot like hay I later realized <laughs> ate like half my head off half my hair was oh, gone ouch. and it was like it felt like way too long before my parents realized something was wrong <laughs> like they were just like laughing for too oh, long. look at Becky being silly banging <laughs> yes. her head against the fence <laughs> Oh, ouch. Picture did not turn out. Needless to say. <laughs> Do you still have that picture? I don't know. They might. I have a picture of me with a pony. We should put them together. Yeah, we should. It'll be fun. But the other thing about ice skating, I was thinking, now nah, I'm just telling these dumb. That's fine. Let's hear it. Okay. Okay. We, I did a, did you study abroad? Yeah. And where did you study? London. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I did, I did a one. I like waited too long. Okay. Uh, and then there was a there was a one, not one semester, a winter semester, like one credit on Catalina Island. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That'd be pretty cute. There's a one semester entrepreneurship abroad thing in in Spain. Okay. Like Barcelona. Barcelona. Where you went and you um learned how people run their businesses with like how kind of schedules are in Spain, like how they take siestas yeah. and kind of just mosey in whenever. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> we went and it was like we were a bunch of idiots, you know, it was like we were there on the holidays and uh, there there were like really cool nightclubs over there. And so we like, we went clubbing this one night and the mm-hmm. next day we had like this really fun tour planned that was like, you go up to a big um, cava uh farm <laughs> factory uh-huh. farm i don't know yeah. and you take this like we took this big like greyhound bus up the way of, and so we like ended up going to this i don't even know club where like there's people spinning around in champagne glasses you know mm. uh-huh. twirling around and we stayed there like until burlesque yeah okay and we ended up staying there like till the morning mm-hmm. and you know, just being bad. And and so we come back, and right when we get back to our little, like, dorms where we were staying, uh, it was time to load onto the bus. So we, like, change really quick, get on this bus that goes, like, in what felt like circular motion for several hours. <laughs> like, I'm I'm so hungover, I'm, I'm certain I'm green. Uh-huh. And we get to, like, have you ever gone wine tasting hungover? No. <laughs> Get up there and it's like, I don't think I ever... Maybe at like a bachelorette party or something. Yeah. 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 I don't think I'd ever also like been tasting ever because I was like still in college. I don't think that was something weird. I don't even... Yeah. It's too elevated. It was far too elevated (laughs) for like the frat party rituals we were involved in. And um, 
So we go up there and we're like, they're taking us through the fields and like showing us how it's made and stuff. And like when you're hungover and people are talking how like it's made, it's just like I, my stomach is churning. Mm-hmm. And then they pour us all a glass. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine holding it. We're all standing there and there's this person that's going on and on talking about the way it's barreled and crafted and bubbled and how long it takes to make the cava. Uh-huh. And they're doing it both in like sp- Spanish and English. Uh-huh. So twice as long as it needs to be. Twice as long as it needs to be. Yep. And then they take the glass and they say, have a smell. Take a sniff Mm -hmm. and tell us. It was like part of whatever. This was like a class where you had to, they had to go down the line of every person. You had to say what you smelled. It Mm -hmm. wasn't like a fun tasting. It was like, this is serious. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so they say, smell it. So I take like, and I'm just like, (laughs) Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna be sick. And I like, I just like, I put the glass down and I sprint inside. And I'm like, where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? And there was like no one around. They were like, go that way. And it was just everything was like dark and quiet. And no one was really around because everyone was outside on the tour. And I like ran till I did not see a bathroom. All I saw was like this giant spiral staircase. And I just leaned over it and just oh, I just ralphed. And I can hear the puke hit the ground like after 30 seconds <laughs> it was like 30 seconds it must have been i don't fucking know how many <laughs> floors <laughs> i'm like Hua! and then yeah 30 seconds later it's like <laughs> oh <laughs> slaps, slaps and splatters oh <laughs> sounds like someone's dumping buckets you know yeah and so i get it all out and i feel like a new woman mm-hmm. okay and i go back out to this tour and then right as I walk back out, the person leading it is like, okay, now we're going to head downstairs and see where the kava is barreled and aged. So they bring the whole fucking tour. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Toward the spiral staircase. Mm-hmm. And everyone, and I'm in the back of the line. And I'm like, the one friend I had on this trip, I was like, dude, dude, this is going to be bad. I just, I, I just, I couldn't even explain it. I was like, I can't say anything. It's, you know, just quietly. uh uh-huh. You know, single file line heading down into the dungeon. <laughs> Luckily, it was pitch black. But we get down there and they, they spend, you know, an hour down there going about how it's barreled. And we're just walking over my puke. Everyone's walk, whole tour's walking over it. Oh, you couldn't no one, smell it? No one said anything. No one saw anything that I know of. Oh, God. <sighs> well, you lucked out. Yes. Gross. I don't know if anyone ever knows about that. Ever knows about that? <laughs> I don't know if anyone ever knows about that. <laughs> I don't know if anyone. I mean, <clears throat> originally was like, I'll take this to the grave. Yeah. Okay, so I'm throwing up. Oh my god, that just reminded me. I I feel like now we're going like tit for tat stories, but what? I I was in high school, and I was in speech and like speech and debate class or something like that, and it was like. We used to be able to just go to the bathroom, I feel like, whenever, but they all of a sudden were being really strict about having yeah. the hall pass. Yes. And I was in class, like, before class started, and we were just chit-chatting, and then I was kind of like, oh, I don't think I'm feeling well. And then, um, and then yeah, like, it kind of hit me that, like, I'm going to throw up. So I went, but I was like, I can't leave the classroom without a hall pass mm-hmm. because I'm so responsible. Oh, perfect. So I go to the teacher's desk and I'm like, hey, Mr. Whatever, um, can I have the hall pass? I have to go to the bathroom. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And then he start like, he's still like helping like three other students. Oh. And I'm just like, um, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be sick. And he's like, oh my God, go like, yeah, go. You don't have to wait. And then you so- didn't know that you could just go though. That's what pisses me off. It's exactly. Like, we didn't know what the, what the deal was yeah. for emergencies. Exactly. So I, I like try to play it cool. And I remember kind of like, um, Jennifer Coolidge and White Lotus last <laughs> night where I like was walking slow in the classroom. And as soon as I got to the hallway, I'm sprinting down the hallway i throw the bathroom door open and i just bah, like all over the floor uh. and then a girl was in there washing her hands and she was like oh um do you want me to get the janitor <laughs> i was just like yeah <laughs> 
I'm like grabbing paper towels, like trying oh, to clean it up. Oh. I'm just grateful I made it to the tile floor at least. Because yeah. could you imagine in high school if you just like on the carpet in the carpet in the hallway? Dude. Oh my God. But yeah. And then I like went to the nurse's office and they called my mom. And my mom apparently was like, you too? Because she had just picked up my brother because he oh. was sick too. So what did you guys have? Just some stomach bug. Yeah. Like we were just real sick. It's terrible. But, but yeah. It's like waiting patiently. It's so but fucked it made up it when you're a, a kid and you're like, your cheeks start watering and you're mm-hmm. like, I know it's coming. Totally. Totally. But you never know when. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <sighs> okay. So we asked everyone for questions. <laughs> Yet again. We got some good new ones. First question says, what's your dream dinner party? Who are you inviting? Mm. They can be alive. They can be dead. They can be made up. I threw that in there myself. <laughs> okay. Do you have an answer for this already? I feel like I have to think about it for a minute. I feel like if it's not people I know really well, a dinner party might give me a little bit of anxiety. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> we know what happens with that. <laughs> Pass the bottle. <laughs> <clears throat> Just to hope there's no spiral staircases nearby. I don't you know, can... Bob Barker. Would he bring his tiny little microphone? That's what I would hope. What I if he showed up and he microphone. didn't bring it? Would you be like, get out? Mm-hmm. How dare you? Because I would expect him to be eating little shish kebabs off of it. Yeah. <laughs> do you, okay, are we planning this? Like, do we want the people to get along or is this truly a selfish, like, I just want people that I want to meet? Or are you trying to, like, curate? I think party. when people ask this question, they mean like selfishly. Okay. I don't know if you're trying to curate an amazing evening because that feels like a very big, something I'm going to have to think through. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's weird to me because I feel like a lot of people always have this in their head. Do you know it? No. I Wait, no. Do you know the answer? <laughs> yeah. What's the answer? <laughs> no, I mean like I've never, I don't really think about this. Yeah, I don't, me neither. It's not something I have. The name that keeps popping up in my head, which I don't really think is true, is Larry David. But I, he's Wait, not like. Do you have a crush on him? Not particularly. <laughs> I feel like I, could, I have like parts of me feel like him. Mm-hmm. But I don't. He's not like my favorite. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's never. I don't know why, but that just keeps coming to my head. Where I think probably because I'm picturing when he goes to a dinner party and he and he, they ask him to take his shoes off and he's like, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> And I've definitely felt that way before where I'm like, I'm not going to take my shoes off. I don't want to take my shoes off. I feel like for some reason I want to say Paul Walker and Jessica Alba <laughs> are the cast of Baywatch. The original one? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Mitch I Buchanan. I don't know who that is. From Baywatch. Okay. Mitch Buchanan. Got it. <laughs> Chris Farley. Okay. And... Yeah, Chris Farley is great. Robin Williams. Mm. I feel like that'd be fun. I wonder what Chris Farley and Robin Williams would be like in the same room because they're both very much Chris on. Bean. Huh? Chris B. Eaton. Chris B. Eaton? <laughs> Chris would be eating. Mitch Buchanan would be making that you feel safe. <laughs> coat. Okay, your turn. I feel like I would want someone like maybe like Noam Chomsky, someone really smart. Was Noam Chomsky? <laughs> Noam Chomsky? <laughs> what is that? I mean, he's he's like an author and a speaker, and he's like a be like Tony Williams. What's his name? Tony, Tony Robbins? Robbins? No, <laughs> not quite. Um, there was a girl at, on my flight yesterday that was had been saying she's she's been following Tony Robbins all around. Going to everywhere he goes. Oh, God. To watch him speak. Okay. Okay, sorry. Go on. Noam That's Chomsky. Okay. Noam Chomsky. Osowski. Um, And Euphigenita Doubtfire. Maybe like... That'd be a fun one. Mrs. Doubtfire. So Robin Williams again? <laughs> <laughs> but as... I would want but the Grinch. Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> yeah. And Paul Walker and Jessica Alba. But as their characters from Into the Blue. Yeah. Um, which I'm guessing you haven't seen. <laughs> no. <laughs> You suck. Yeah, okay. Noam Chomsky. Let's stick with Larry David. Although I really want to hang out with Chris Farley. My my you senior steal mine. I know, but my senior quote in the yearbook is a Chris Farley quote. But I didn't say it was his quote. I just You just took it? I just have it in there. And the quote is 
sorry if I don't wipe properly. That is what is forever <laughs> documented. Yeah. In your high school yearbook? In my high school yearbook, the senior quote, yeah, I apologize to the world for not wiping properly, which is a Chris Farley quote from SNL. Um, Do you know in the yearbook I got most likely to be a reality star? I didn't know that. But my quote was also, I, I might argue more embarrassing. <laughs> I like made a poem or a rhyme. Oh, it was dumb, but it said like something about the chunks we've spewed. Oh God! The dates we've dudesed. I don't know. It was like it was dumb. Stoop. It was really stoop, and I yeah. was like, "This is witty." <laughs> God. Yeah. I mean, it's all embarrassing. Yeah. Anyway, I I don't I can't think of the names, but I think I would want someone really smart, someone really funny, someone really creative, like Virgil Abloh or something. And then me. So me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just want. You three times. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? I want to live on the coast somewhere. You do? I want to live on the coast, but with access to a big city. And I want to like live and own like a B and B. So I can just like meet interesting people and like, you know, hang out. In oh, your own little shit's creek. Some yeah, exactly. But like in a nicer, like the water, the body of water wouldn't be shit's creek. You want your life to be a Hallmark holiday movie. Maybe. I see that for you. Maybe that's what I want. I yeah. see that for you, Miriam. Man in the desk. I think it would be Telling really everyone fun. what to do. Yeah. Have a little garden. Designing a bunch of weird little boutique rooms with a bunch of weird little fucking trinkets. Yeah. <laughs> that Sounds only you great. Like. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. There could be a glitter room just for you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice with a circle with bed. No glue. With a circle. <laughs> with a circle bed that turns. Uh huh. Turns just me a like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Your giblets and oil. <laughs> oh, God. Hot oil grease. I shouldn't have told that story. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. I know it's really weird. You do weird things when you're a kid. It's very odd. Very odd. Yeah. Where would you live? I would live. I think like Big Sky. Montana. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I only went when it was there was fire. There was a fire, so I couldn't was see fire. any. There was fire. Couldn't see anything. It just it's like Narnia. I need to go back. And I love seasons. I love the cold. I love the storms. That Crazy they get. that you've lived in LA for so long, and that's how you feel about weather. I know. It took well. me a long time to realize because I've always had a very romantic view of. I don't know, especially like Sunset Boulevard or something. Yeah. Like forever. I was just like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. You you used to live right on Sunset. I know. I loved it. But I, I know I, I love seasons because otherwise time passes and you kind of are like, you don't realize. Yeah, that's true. You know, and it's nice to have a little reset in in regards to the, in. it's nice to have a little reset prompted by leaves dying. Yeah. You know that maybe it's part for, part of time for part of my personality to die as well. <laughs> I think Montana, but then I would like to have a place in LA and New York as well, and maybe something in Idaho. I do think I want. I I would like to be by coastal. Yeah, a little city, little yeah. city nook. Yeah, I think I think I just don't like people ask me if because I moved here five years ago. People are always like, "Do you love it? Like, are you going to stay?" I think I'm just at the age where people are like, "Where are you going to settle down?" Yeah, and I'm like, I don't. I don't not like it here, but I wouldn't say this is like forever. Yeah. You know, but I don't think anywhere is forever until I'm like ready to retire and have a B and B and just like that's yeah. my life. B and B. How is this the first time I'm hearing about the B and Miriam's bed and breakfast? It's always been like a little fantasy. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'll probably have to live there. <laughs> I'll be your caretaker. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have gone mad by then. <laughs> Just be in a room truly like Shit's Creek with my wigs stapled to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll be the next one woman show. <laughs> Ski poles everywhere. Oh my God. Yeah, it's been interesting to see where some friends have moved to like start their families that mm-hmm. I never would have expected them to move. Like states they've never lived in before because sure. of like their husband or, yeah. you know, or wife or whatever, or partner. Yeah. That they're, like, going to have their kids there. Mm-hmm. You're like, did you want this even? I know. Are you Les Miserables? <laughs> Just bark twice if you are. I'll come get you. 
bark twice. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> What's the best thing you learned doing Sober October? Oh, What's the best thing you learned doing sober October? That alcohol is my is the alcohol is the alcohol is the devil. <laughs> that alcohol is the devil. Yeah. That alcohol is the greatest uh supplier of anxiety and maybe depression in my life. Yeah. And maybe I'm not that sad after all. Yeah. I just have very bad fucking pre period. Sadness. Apparently, and maybe I do my, too. And maybe my hormones overall are very fucked up. You could do like I know. You could get all your hormones checked out. Hormones. <laughs> <laughs> you could get your hormones in your horoscope. What's the best thing you learned? Um, you didn't even do it. Yeah, I did. Not really. I had three glasses of wine on a pre-planned wine tasting weekend. Yeah. Well, you didn't really do it like I did, so therefore you didn't. Okay. You also did. Sober October and sober November. I know. I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> um, I, let's see. I think every, I like, I've talked about this before on here, but I like challenges. Oh, yeah. So I think it's just nice to, like, say you're going to do something and do it. It feels yeah. motivating. It feels like you get a little jolt from that. Like, I don't think I, I needed to learn anything about, like, how alcohol impacts my life. Mm -hmm. But. You know, um, you know enough for how it impacts me. <laughs> <laughs> Marry him, or, help! Or, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I I liked it. I think it's fun to do. The challenge is a good one. I like. Challenges. I also learned that Fireball makes your shit smell like black licorice. You learned that during Sober October. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, it every yeah. Because everything, I didn't have black licorice turds during October. Therefore. Oh, got it, got it, got it. The absence of black licorice turds. Yes. Made you come across It was this. a real telltale sign. Wow, interesting. The challenge is a good one, though. Yeah. I learned that anything is possible for 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, if you got enough a Taco Bell. The, yeah, enough ice cream, enough Taco Bell. Yeah. Enough Zins. Yes. Anything's possible. What else did we learn? Then I'm a better performer. Probably. Uh, I think your confidence, too, your confidence went up um, during Sober October. Uh-huh. Yeah, we came back to homeostasis. Yeah, balanced out. Okay, what's your most embarrassing short story? Buckle up. Okay, mine. I'll go first because mine's not really that exciting or embarrassing. It just is the how, only... How is that supposed to entertain people listening? It's the only short story I have. Mm. I've sharded once. once. I was about 10 years old. Okay. And I lived in a cul-de-sac, and my best friends lived, like, around the corner. And they were coming over to play. And I often, when they were going to come over, I would stand at the window and, like, watch and see, like, when they... Am! No wonder <laughs> you want to be and be a little psycho. When they would come. And, um, and I remember, like, I was wearing a pair of jean shorts... So it must have been summertime. And um, I was like waiting, waiting, waiting. They hadn't shown up yet. And then I thought I was about to fart. And then I pooped a little nugget. And then I saw them like come around the bend. And I was like, <gasps> like now my time is to clean this up is uh, limited. <laughs> um, and I like ran upstairs and threw out my underwear and did a quick, quick little swaparoo and just played with them and never told them. So you sharded a full nugget? It was just a little nugget. A oh, solid nugget? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that's diarrhea. Pretty, that's pretty rare. It was just a little pellet that's shot really, out. That's really rare, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was the one. That is extremely... Okay. Now you... I can't believe it blew out. I know. I mean, also, that's my memory of it. Maybe it was like... It must have been a real ground bloom of a fart. Ground bloom? Yeah, like a raw. And maybe had some force. <laughs> okay. Mine was when I was living in that place off Sunset. Mm hmm. Um, with Erica and <laughs> Vanessa. Mm -hmm. And I think it was during the, definitely was during the time I was doing Wild and Out. Okay. Um, because I like 
did not sleep very much during that time. Um, Because you would, like, get the call sheet really late, and then you'd have to be up at, like, 7 back there. So I remember it was, like, 3 a.m. I had ordered Taco Bell, and I was, like, trying to write, like, jokes and, like, raps Mm -hmm. just because I, like, thought I was sucking so bad. I was, like, I'm so bad at this. I stayed up, like, all night, every night just trying to write, like, a thousand jokes and a thousand sample raps or things that rhymed. Uh (laughs) And um, and I had, like, eaten – I had eaten, like, one of the burritos, and then I was on to the second one, and I was, like, sitting there taking a break, and I was wearing these little, like, spandex shorts, and I unwrap the burrito, I open the fire sauce, I sauce to bite, and then I farted, and it was a shart, <laughs> like, diarrhea, sandy, seedy shart. Uh-huh. And I then I took the bite because I had already sauced it. I, had already sauced it. I was like, <laughs> I'll deal with this later. <laughs> I wrapped the burrito up, set it down, and like very carefully walked to the bathroom to deal with it. <laughs> oh, I just couldn't amazing. put it. Yeah. I couldn't put down a perfectly sauced, fresh bite. I don't know that I could say with confidence that I wouldn't have done the exact same thing. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I think I might have. Because okay. what's done is done. What, are you going to make another mess? No. 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 You want to get sauce everywhere. You can't get sauce can everywhere. You can, you, can you even? Yeah. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've learned, though, a lot of my friends in our 30s are all sharting. Everyone's shark. A lot of people like do it often. I know. And I, I literally I haven't done it since I was 10. And I'm like, when is my time? Well, you don't want to hope for it. No, I because <laughs> you're gonna summon it. I also feel like the lot like it's like the way white pants summon a period. Oh, sure. Jeans and specifically jean shorts summon a shart. Yeah. I'll stay away from jean shorts. <laughs> no shorts. Thank you very much. <laughs> it sucks though when you shart and it's diarrhea because and sorry if you're eating at home while you're listening to this or wherever you are well you won't let us eat on the podcast so yeah I can't even eat a freaking kernel of popcorn mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when you shart and you're seated I'm mm-hmm. not even gonna say it you feel like a ch- a toddler a jippa toddler <laughs> <laughs> a uh, jalopy toddler Right. Yeah. Because like, you're as sitting if you on were, your own yeah, shit. As if you were wearing a little diapy. You know what else? While we're on the subject. Let's hear it. One time, I was at Paige's house again. Uh-huh. My best childhood friend. Ah! And we had been eating a bunch of corn dogs. Mm-hmm. Taquitos. Corn dogs again? Taquitos. Okay. She loved taquitos. She was always making beef taquitos. But her mom did make a mean corn dog. And one time I told my mom that her mom made better corn dogs and my mom got pissed. Wow. Yeah, I know. Corn dog rivalry of the century. <laughs> so, so we had eaten a bunch of beef taquitos and I like sprinted upstairs because I had shit and I just ran into her bathroom, pulled my pants down, sat on the toilet and shit a mountain in the toilet seat was up. Down, I mean. Oh, you pooped on the closed lid? Yeah. <laughs> How did you not know? I just wasn't looking. <laughs> I think I was wearing tights, so I was more focused on getting the tights off. Oh, no. Um, when I was, like, in first grade, my Iranian grandma had knit me this. Or maybe she didn't knit it, but she sent an outfit for me that was, like, green and rainbow. Like, green with, like, pink and yellow stripes on it. Like it, And it was a matching skirt and top. And I was wearing white tights. And I walked home from Mary Woodward, our <laughs> elementary school. and um, I had to go pee, so I, like, ran in our downstairs bathroom, and either my dad or my brother had left the seat up, and I didn't realize it, and I, like, went to sit on the toilet, and I fell in. (laughs) Isn't that embarrassing? No one's around. And I'm just in, like, my, like, knitted, like, (laughs) thick knitted skirt was just saturated with pee water. And I was like, They didn't even flush it? Well, I think I was pee because I really had to pee, oh, so I think so you, I was pee. <laughs> you sat in your own piss. That's yeah. so sad, Miriam. 
Yeah. I've sat down on a couple of toilets where the guys leave them up. You, just you fall really right you're in. like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. You get pissed at the entire gender. Yeah. You're like, fucking men. Yeah. I fell in the fucking toilet. Well, I think they don't realize, like, it's not just about little pee droplets on the seat. Like, that's bad. It's the fact that we're getting sucked into we're the toilet. We're falling into the we're toilet. We're falling in. You know? Okay. Maybe not now with the size of our asses. I barely, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would. I couldn't fall in if I, you definitely couldn't. <laughs> but at one point in my life. You could probably barely fit your whole butt crack on a toilet. <sighs> <laughs> Deep as it is. <laughs> Guys, and with that, I've been Becky Robinson. And I still am Mariam Mulligafari. This is the Start at Birth podcast. If you've been sending in questions, thank you so much. We love getting them. You can reach our phone number and email start at birthpod at gmail.com. I'm at Becky Robinson 4 on Instagram. Miriam is at Miriam Grace. Mm-hmm. We've got fresh items on the Entitled Housewife shop, so check them out. Yeah. And the Start at Birth podcast is at Start at Birth. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, we got lots of fun stuff. Keep sending us emails. Keep rating, reviewing, uh, writing comments. Even the emails that are words of encouragement are really sweet. Yeah, we've been, we need it. We've been very insecure. (laughs) Only sometimes. (laughs) That's it. Okay, thanks. Bye.